Hi, I'm from the OK, and you're in the stream. Indian regulators have just passed a landmark judgment in favour of net neutrality. But the debate in India still goes on about free internet. Now, this is a conversation that we're going to have both sides in the debate right here in the studio. And even if you're not in India, but you do have internet, you should pay attention. It may well impact you as well. Digital producer, Malika Balau. Mm -hmm. In fact, people are paying attention, and that is because this case involves Facebook, which is everywhere. Now, the company hoped to offer free mobile access to a limited number of websites and services through a controversial plan called Free Basics. India's population is about 1.1 billion, and it's estimated that only 15% are online. Free Basics is already in operation in several countries around the world. So here's founder Mark Zuckerberg to explain his motivation. Connectivity can't just be a privilege for some of the rich and powerful. It needs to be something that everyone shares. So one of the main things that we've done is we started working with Airtel to launch free basic internet services in Zambia. And for the first time, hundreds of thousands of people started to get access to some basic services for health, education, jobs, communication. And we start to hear some pretty amazing stories. The internet has so much information about what's going on in the world, what's new, um, Facebook, networking with people, meeting different people. You know, it's empowering. Who are all the people who probably could be building services uh, that you know the world is robbed of those services because those people don't have the tools that they need to, to go build those things. You're not just helping the people who don't have access to the internet today, you really are improving the world for everyone else too. That really is the thing that drives me. Connecting the world, giving everyone a voice. Well that was the pitch to India, but what happened? The Indian Telecom Authority's decision came after an 11-month social media campaign by activists to educate users and inform them on why they believe Facebook's free basics plan and the telecom operators were violating net neutrality. The Indian comedy group AIB put together a series of videos. Have a look. So what are the arguments that Facebook is making? For starters, it argues that free basics doesn't violate net neutrality because anyone can join free basics and it isn't just for a few select partners. But Facebook also has the right to reject participants for free basics. So you're fired. Second of all, these technical requirements don't allow for VOIP, high res photos, videos, or any services that interfere with telco services. So hang on. Free basics says it's doing this to connect the poor and people in rural areas. But TRAI's own recommendations say that people in rural areas should have more access to video than text because video even cuts across literacy barriers. Logically, if free connectivity of people is your digital equality goal, then shouldn't you be allowing VOIP services on it? Let's be honest, you don't want digital equality. You want digital equality that doesn't mess with telco's interests. So you've just seen two very different takes on the same issue. To discuss this perspective and his perspective, on set we have Sardanan Dume. He's a resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Kiran Jamalagada is a co-founder and volunteer with the Save the Internet campaign. Indian political satirist and co-founder of the group we saw just a few moments ago, Gusmaran Kumba. And Mahir Sharma is a columnist for the Business Standard. So good to have you all here, gentlemen. Mahir, I'm just looking here on my laptop. Internet.org by Facebook. Their campaign, it was slick. It was slick to bring this package to India where as long as you had a phone, there were a certain number of websites that you could get, including Facebook, all for free, and it's known as Free Basics. What could possibly go wrong? What went wrong here? Well, they ran an absolutely terrible campaign. Um, actually, if they hadn't spent as much money as they did, if they didn't uh, come across as quite as bullying as they eventually did, uh. they might have done a lot better with a regulator. The one thing that you can't do if you're a giant multinational company operating in India is to tell everyone that you're, giant, that you're a giant multinational mm -hmm. company that's only here to help people. Right. Nobody is going to believe that. What was the bullying? Well, uh, you know, they, they got into something of a shouting match with the regulator while the regulator was still deciding on whether free basics would be allowed. Oh. Now, you know, if you're in a courtroom, you don't uh, argue with the judge, and they just did that very badly. Ooh. 
Uh, Kiran, you heard me here call it bullying. So this is what some people yes. online thought. This is Akash who says he saw it as tricking people into signing up for free basics. And he also goes on to say Facebook notified users multiple times a day about how their friends were signing up for free ba ba basics. They had pre-drafted email that basically only said free basics is good. Don't ban it. Kiran, do you see a problem there? Do you see it as tricking people? Oh, absolutely, and it got worse. Um, uh, what Mihir said about bullying, they took out newspaper ads calling out people like me, saying these are the things that net neutrality activists will not tell you about free basics. Um, that that was uh, quite bizarre. You know, I didn't expect to see me being called out in a newspaper ad saying I'm lying to people. Uh, that's extreme bullying. I mean, uh, how much money do you have to spend on an ad saying somebody is lying to you about what we are, all the good things we are doing? Just, so you combine, we, yeah, you combine yeah, an ad ahead. campaign like that, yeah. and you combine this with a online campaign that's clearly designed to say, I love free basics, and I have no choice in this matter, and all my friends love free basics. Um, it's obviously going to piss off a lot of people, and that's basically exactly what happened. Oh, I think just to jump in there, I think, I think just bullying is not the right term. I think it was rather disingenuous. Uh, I mean... I know Facebook is an addictive website, but if somebody's uncle who's died three years ago is uh, expressing their support on Facebook and you're getting that notification, uh, I don't think people are rising from the dead uh, to try and sign up for it. It's a very and those are the kind of messages there. that were also, uh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't think a website is that good. And uh, those are the kind of examples that were coming through. Uh, so I think uh, Disingenuous is probably a better word than bullying, or maybe that's a word that you can use to supplement uh, the term bullying. I mean, I think what where we can all agree is that Facebook did a terrible job of selling free basics in India. Uh, it certainly came across as carrying the white man's burden. You don't go to India and tell Indians that Facebook has come to save you, as, as, as Mihir showed. But I think the more interesting argument is not where, 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 the, where Facebook went wrong in terms of its marketing, but I think all four of us agree that it went wrong, mm -hmm. but whether the idea itself was a good idea or a bad idea. Wow. And I believe the idea was a good idea, and it was beat, beaten by a group of activists who were basically not representing the people without access, very privileged people themselves, and the losers at the end have been poor Indians who end up with no internet when they could have had some internet. So we have some of those activists who are on our show right now. What was it that you really liked about Free Basics? If you put yourself in the position of someone who has nothing, you don't have the internet, and you have a really cheap old phone, and there's no way that you can afford data, and someone comes to you and says, here you can have a limited internet. It had about 80 websites, including jobs, health, weather. I agree that that internet is not the same internet that you enjoy and I enjoy, but I feel that a poor person should be allowed to make that decision for themselves. So poor man's internet, anything wrong with that, Kieran? Yes, um, the internet is, should be the same for everyone. There is no such thing as a poor man's internet. Now, I also want to point out that free basics wasn't actually free. Um, startling, but true. Uh, I actually tried getting onto free basics. As it turns out, um, you have to pay for data to get onto free basics. It is not free. You need to pay for everything else, and only your access to the free basics websites is discounted. But you do not get free basics without paying anything. Um, most people who endorse free basics seem to have completely missed this aspect of it. Ah, Mihir, have you tried free basics? I tried it on a friend's phone. Um, I haven't tried it on my own. Um, it's you know the, the truth is that I think a lot of people would have been very happy to be able to access certain basic websites um, in a low bandwidth kind of way. You know, when we saw that a video earlier from AIB saying that, isn't it terrible that poor people won't have access to high-res photos and won't have access to video? Yeah, sure. Um, it, 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 it is terrible that people will continue to have to pay for that. But the, the, the option that was originally available to them to get Wikipedia for free uh, no longer exists, and I think that that's a shame. I think there's someone here who agrees with you. This is Mohsen on Twitter, and he says, free basics could have helped the Indian population, the poor ones, he writes, to connect with the world, and so it needed to be cherished and not abandoned. But on the other side, Kamba, there's this argument, and, and I'll direct this one to you. This is Makoti who says, this is basically a few people having the internet who are deciding that poor should have or not 
have free internet. Do you think that this is a privileged uh, position that people campaigning against free basics basically hold? I think it's I think it's funny that the people who are campaigning against free basics are being called privileged, and suddenly everybody who's on Facebook side, which is a giant multi-billion-dollar corporation, is not privileged. Uh, I don't seem to understand that argument. Nobody's saying uh, that. Uh, like I love how the argument's been shaped from like an anti-poor perspective. Nobody is saying that people should not have access to the internet. All we're saying is that Facebook's uh, face, uh, free basics uh, is not exactly uh, the model that should work. Uh, Kiran, for example, can allude on a lot of other models that have worked. Uh, the Mozilla Foundation runs uh, one such example, for example. Uh, if you have, say, for example, even something as simple as uh, Wi-Fi being put up uh, by Google at a certain Indian railway station, they're not sort of limiting a specific aspect of the internet and sort of barriering that which only a few people can access. Now, I think if a company uh, wants to provide access to people, they can provide access to people. Uh, also, let's not keep in, let's not forget that the regulation and TRI's decision is not just about free basics alone. I think this entire uh, hoopla about free basics also happened uh, because obviously it's a much bigger uh, network. Uh, but when the TRAI put out the first consultation paper, it has more to do with telcos. It has more to do with the kind of plans that a telecom company like Airtel came up with, where a certain few privileged apps, uh, you know, would be zero rated by it. Uh, so I don't think uh, it's an anti-poor argument at all. I think it's easy to say it, uh, but I think it's it's about finding uh, the right model. No, I mean, it, all we did was it, it is an anti-poor argument. Was, and I'll tell you how it is. The simple thing is that the poor person who's being offered free basics is not being allowed to make that choice for themselves. And instead, you have a group of activists who get together and, and create this campaign and persuade the regulator. It's perfectly fair for them to do that. But the fact of the matter is that if you're a poor person in India, about a billion Indians don't have the internet. Internet penetration rates in India are, are much lower than Mexico, Thailand, the Philippines. All those countries have free basics. They haven't turned it down. The fact is that if you're a poor peasant somewhere in India in the middle of nowhere and you don't have free basics, what these people yeah. have decided for you is that sure. Facebook can't offer it to you for free. And just, that is unfair. I actually would like to no, Let me just say, because, because uh, we, we've somebody threw in there uh, uh, zero rating. Zero rating basically means that just to jump on the internet, there's certain bundled websites that are uh, included in your plan, so you don't have to pay an extra data uh, fee for those uh, bundled websites. Go ahead, Karen. So there are several uh, things here that um, that need to be corrected. Uh, one of them, so let's understand the concepts first. Uh, zero rating is essentially one of the terms that's been used here. And zero rating is part of the larger um, concept of differential pricing, which is that a telecom operator deciding on your behalf to make some site cheaper or more expensive uh, without consulting you in this decision. That the telecom operator by themselves decided that they will do this because of the goodness of their hearts or you know the opposite. And um, one aspect of this is making websites completely free for ostensibly promotional purposes to say, let's show people the benefit of the internet by giving it something for free. Um, now, you should understand here that Facebook was not giving anything for free. Facebook simply ran a service that said, we will make it easy for a telecom operator to identify that we endorse this website as being cheap. But it was a telecom operator that chose to make something for free. And therefore, free, free basics has not been banned in India because free basics is a service of Facebook. Facebook is not subject to regulation by a telecom operator, uh, by the telecom regulator. The regulator only issued an order on telecom operators saying, you cannot charge different prices for different websites because it is not your choice, it is a user's choice. Um, essentially, it said choice must belong to the poor person, not to the telecom operator. Um, this does not stop Facebook from subsidizing internet access. It does not stop them from offering free basics as a bundle of low bandwidth sites. So um, several of these assumptions that are being made here are slightly incorrect. And the slight incorrectness means that you got this entire story upside down. Malika. Okay, so in writing this story a little bit, I want to bring up something that's actually a pushback to uh, what you said, Sadan. And this was uh, Lukman, and he says, 
what Zuckerberg needs to stop doing is with this pseudo altruism. More internet users, if we're honest, equals more Facebook users. Another person says that same thing, uh, that more internet users is really more Facebook users, which is really more money at the end of the day I, for Facebook. I think that is a perfectly valid point. I don't think that, that there is any uh, point in saying that Zuckerberg's only goal is altruism. But this fact remains that if you're a person without internet access and a rich guy comes and says, hey, I'm going to give you access to 80 sites and one of them is going to be my Facebook, that's what he's doing, sure. Could he be like, is he Mother Teresa? Could he be offering the free, the free, free websites and not anything but Facebook? Maybe, and then maybe we'd have a higher opinion of him. So, so I think the criticism is, Mark I think that point is valid, Sorry, but it's still good for people. He says, he says here, this is, this is his response after he heard of, of uh, um, the net neutrality protection in, in India. So he says, while we're disappointed with today's decision, I want to personally communicate that we are committed to keep working to break down barriers to connectivity in India and around the world. Kumba, are you convinced by that? Is that great piece of philanthropy or was that a great piece of business going on there uh, no I think uh, obviously it's a it's a great uh, piece of business I don't think uh, there's any two ways about that and sort of Sadanand agrees with that point point of view as well mm -hmm. uh, it's one of their next big sort of frontier markets because obviously there are a lot of uh, users that uh, are sort of up for grabs so I will not be surprised if uh, Facebook sort of makes another push for it uh, but again, coming back to what uh, Kiran said, uh, it's not, uh, even though it's sort of, it's easier to sort of put that debate into look at him uh, as a bad guy or whatever. Uh, I think we're all clear, even on, on our side of the debate, it wasn't just about Facebook or free basics. Uh, the petitions that went to TREI were about differential pricing. Uh, and eventually both sides presented their argument and they took a call. I'm, uh, I'm in incredibly impressed uh, even if it, the decision had gone the other way, I'm incredibly impressed that TREI uh, decided to factor in all of the different uh, points of view and opinion on this, yeah. because I don't remember the last time we had a debate uh, which, for example, was That's even fact. civil and the fact that so many people engaged with it. Uh, so the fact that it even happened and the fact that TREI took a decision, I think, was a good step for India as well. And it's something other countries can also emulate. It was really interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll go uh, second. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, go. Please. Um, in fact, I think uh, Kamba is completely wrong about this because what we actually saw was very typical uh, for Indian government. It was a regulator listening to the people who spoke the loudest. Um, in fact, you know, at the beginning of the program, people did talk about how people, uh, you know, the regulator was deeply upset that a lot of people wrote in to them and, you know, were, were sent to them by Facebook. I mean, Sure, some of them may have been fraudulent, but a lot of people were genuine who wrote in saying, look, we like free basics, don't take it away from us. And the regulator got extremely huffy, as did a lot of the uh, um, anti-free basics people saying, the question is a much more important and deep one about the nature of differential pricing and the principle of net neutrality. But however, the regulator actually should have been listening to as well to all the people saying, look, we like this. You as a regulator are supposed to be looking out for the consumer you didn't bother to. All right, so let me Instead, just think about the Indian consumer here, is, Mahir, if, if, I, if I may, gentlemen, if I may. Everybody yes. here is talking about uh, uh, India being connected. In fact, in the region, it, it's probably one of the worst connected places in the whole of Southeast Asia. It's, it's terrible for connectivity, really, really low. There's a lot of concern in this debate about what happens to poor in India, if they don't have free basics, how are they going to get online? What are people saying, Malika? So there are some uh, interesting um, scenarios that people are, are, are giving up for recommendation. This is Smile, who says, he offers this, Kiran. He says, telecompanies can offer free data, let's say the first gig of usage, rather than offering unlimited access to few websites. And you were talking earlier about the differential pricing and that being problematic here. Do you see this as being a potential solution to making sure that everyone could get online, potentially? Absolutely. And um, I think uh, most people also are not aware of the facts of how many people actually are online in India. Um, as of October 2015, um, we had 375 million users online. By December, that would have been much larger. We have more users online than all of North America. Uh, so please keep that in mind. It's uh, India is so large that percentages and actual numbers 
uh, tell you completely different stories depending on which one you want to look at. Mm. Uh, Indian telcos are acquiring users at the rate of 1 million users on the internet every three and a half days. Uh, keep that in mind. Facebook's free basics was essentially ordered offline Karen, what eight days ago. The, what happens and to, that the, means to people in India who are, are not connected? Then. They're not connected. What happens now? Because you campaigned for them not to have uh, cheap internet, maybe not free as you pointed that's, out, but that's cheap internet. That's not completely internet. true. And uh, so let's look at the numbers again. Free yeah. basics was Let's not look at the numbers. Let's talk year. about people in India not having access to the internet. Let's talk about that now. Well, they were not getting it for free basics for sure. Yeah, how, because how, do, how do you do that now? In one year, acquired one million users. In eight days since it went down, Indian telecom operators have acquired two million users. Mind you, one year versus eight days. They're doing much better without free basics than with free basics. Uh, most people don't even bother to look at the numbers. I mean, you know, what this comes down to is this you don't have any way of getting around, and someone comes and offers you a bicycle. And then these guys come up and say, hey, well, you know, the bicycle is no good. You really need a Rolls Royce. And that's the, that is the central problem that, with their argument. Is if someone is offering you a bicycle, you should have a right to, take, to use that bicycle. <laughs> and if someone and else has should. a better and offer to make, they can make that I too. But who are yeah. these guys to deny you that bicycle? Ah. You know, they'll come and they'll say that that's this bicycle, story. actually, Nobody's you know, it'll you tell the bicycle. bicycle owner where you're going. Right. But as long as I know the bicycle owner will, uh, he knows where I'm going, what's the problem? I'm making that choice by myself. Kambi, are you, are you average... responsible for taking so many people's bicycles away in India now? To keep the analogy going. Femi, I wish yeah. I had that kind of power, yeah. uh, but I already, but uh, even when, for example, when Mihir said that uh, we sort of out shouted, uh, you know, TRI listened to us because we shouted more. I am amazed at that because if I knew that we could out shout a 300 uh, crore rupee campaign by a company, I would have been in advertising way longer. Uh, I would have set up an agency. So but, this is what uh, I, I can't. This is what I haven't got to products. yet, and I really, really, really insist that we get to this. So now, what happens for people in India who are not connected yet? Kamba, Lots what happens to them? What are the options? All right. Uh, so, like Kiran said already, I think telecom operators uh, themselves, if you look at their own numbers, uh, they've been managed. To, they've been managing to acquire. Uh, connections and new people coming online uh, at a much faster pace than what Free Basics did in the last one year as well. Uh, I think what there are two different things to uh, here. One is you're trying to look at differential pricing and how it violates the principle of net neutrality. I don't think you should equate the two because for I example, haven't. Right I've now, moved here, on, and I'm asking what correct, happens correct, to correct. people in India who are not connected. You don't have an answer. Sutherland, do you have an answer? Yeah, so what, what he's essentially saying is that I don't want you to get a free bicycle now, but five years from now, you can buy a bicycle. Yay, yippee. That's what it comes down to, right? So what they have done is someone has come up with something which is free. Yeah. They have said, no, that's not good enough because it's not pure enough. Yeah. And eventually, so this is going to get solved. To but the problem is that this does not solve the problem actually the in the here problem. and now. What Free Basics actually offered is to say, hey, you know what? I can't afford to give you a bicycle. It's too expensive. Let me give you a tire instead. And maybe you'll figure out you know, how to you know, do something funny with a tire that gets you from place A to place B. That's just but not true. That's exactly and what let me, is. And, let me, and, not let, me, and let me remind, and let me remind these guys that it's, it's not like the free basic service was actually free. You still had to pay for Kamba, the data. It's you let like the person make up their own mind. Let them decide. That's the basic principle and here. That's the thing. And still the debate continues on. Just take a pause for a minute, gentlemen. Malika, what do you have? I just want to give us a tease to the post show and also a little perspective from outside of India. This is Limbo who says, please let the Facebook resources in India be transferred to Nigeria. It will be very welcome. So I think this could lead into a discussion, Femi, about what this might mean for other countries and other emerging markets. All right, so this judgment very quickly. Uh, Sadan, uh, was it a victory, victory for India? Uh, no, it was. It was a clear loss for India and perhaps a victory for Nigeria. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, Kamba, was this a victory for India, this judgment? Uh, I think it was the victory uh, for the telecom regulator. I think the way forward is something uh, that will have to be decided. Right. Uh, I think it was a victory because differential pricing uh, is not something as a model that works. All right, so Sadal and Kiran and Kamba and also Mahir, we're going to take our bicycles and our Rolls Royces to the stream.outazir.com in the post show. Thanks, everybody, for watching.
Hello again. We're discussing net neutrality in India. We're going to get right back to that conversation. So this conversation, I think we really kind of had the, a really good debate around free basics. Yes, I like the way that we went about this debate. You can hear all the different angles. So as people were listening to that around the world, mm -hmm. do you want to recap that, that comment that we had from Nigeria? Well, as, as uh, we started the top of the show with, this is actually a service that is provided in at least 30 other countries. And so one of them, uh, a, a, a person from one country, this is Nigeria, who said, he hears this debate and he wants these resources to be transferred to Nigeria and uh, Southern Ireland. I saw you see this tweet and you look like you wanted to react. He says this would be welcomed there. What does this mean for other countries who are looking at this in terms of what it might mean for them? Yeah, I mean, I think part of the issue here really is that uh, if you look around the world, there are many countries with much deeper internet penetration rates in India that have not turned up their nose at free basics. Whereas what you have is the anti-free basics campaigners who have consistently compared India with Japan and the Netherlands and sort of set up some idealized idea of net neutrality. I don't say that their intentions are bad, their intentions are good, but I say that their judgment is not rooted in the simple Indian reality. And what Limbo, or whatever that person's name is on Twitter, is saying points to that fact that many people in many parts of the world would welcome an opportunity to have something like free basics. Mahia, just looking at the judgment that India made about net neutrality, what do you think the ripple effects might be around the world? Well, I think that a lot of countries tend to look at Indian regulatory uh, rulings as something that sets a different standard from what the developed world has typically chosen. That's happened in pharmaceuticals, it's happened in various other sectors, it may also happen in, in uh, telecom. Certainly that's what the net neutrality people are very happy about. They think that this is one of the strongest rulings that they could possibly have hoped for, Absolutely. and you can tell that they've been sort of passing it on uh, uh, to other people in, in other jurisdictions. But it's, it's very typical, actually, that India takes some sort of outside and extreme point of view on things like this. We are not only an unnecessarily prickly country, but also one in which we have a large enough elite hmm. that it imagines that it sits in Northern California <laughs> and not in the middle of the most desperately poor country in the world. It's a bit surprising that uh, Mihir says this because uh, I happen to be sitting in India. I've uh, been here most of my life. And uh, I can say this is the same. Not in Bangalore, and, which imagines it's Northern California. Well, that's a terrible statement to make, it is, uh, Mihir. It has and the weather I'm sorry, of Northern California, it has the startup culture of Northern California, and it but has clearly the internet have connectivity internet of Northern California. California. So that's the one thing that I'm happy about. But um, I'm certainly hoping that more countries will follow. Um, it looks like the U.S. is going to copy India. FCC is now looking at banning zero rating as well. Um, if that happens, then, well, that's fantastic. You know, the U.S. is copying India for once instead of the other way around. And you can say that, what, well, FCC is imagining that there's a good try. U.S. activists all the time. I mean, that's the basic problem, that whether it is in GMOs or whether it is in net neutrality, we just pick up arguments that have been made in far more developed countries in the far different stage of okay. economic development, so, and we bring them to places where we just don't have the same uh, problems. I have to it's say that statement I agree that entirely I'm with Mayor. Someone, well, that's terrible. You know, that's, uh, I'm out here making original statements. Uh, we have done a fair bit of original work on this campaign. And the fact that we do research-based advocacy doesn't mean that we are shouting louder. It just means that we are more factual. Have you had any... No, I think that you're... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Sadran, what did you want to add? No, I just wanted to echo Mihir's comment. I mean, I don't very often get to say the words, Mihir, I agree with you entirely, so let me make the most of that. <laughs> <laughs> Malika. There are two points that I wanted to bring up here, just kind of statements of fact. And this one, first one is from Smile, who wants us all to remember that India is a country with the third highest number of startups in the world. So taking that into account based on what you said, Mihir. Uh, but this next one is kind of a victory tweet. This is um, Kashyapa, who says, that this ruling really, it is a big victory for us here in India. We saved our internet. So Kamba, where do you go from here? What's next for you on this issue? Uh, I'm always wary of statements uh, like that. Uh, I think uh, we have to obviously, yes. there is still a lot of, uh, there is still a lot of uh, uh, things that you need to look at. For example, uh, even after this uh, ruling by the regulator, you have to look at uh, you know what about uh, data throttling and uh, there's a lot of other technicalities that uh, have to be looked at 
so I don't think I think that that statement is uh, unnecessarily grandiose. I feel a little bit, uh, but again, uh, the the regulator uh, sort of made a good decision. I feel after looking at both of their uh, both sides of the story, uh, and then let's see what happens from there. But there's still a lot of work yeah. uh, left. I'm to going be to done add there. a couple of things to that. You know, so um, uh, before you do that, do you want to just explain data data throttling for people who may be new to that concept? They probably sure. have experienced so, it, but they might not know what it is. Go ahead. Data throttling is a simple concept that um, a telecom operator or an internet service provider decides on your behalf that um, they don't want you accessing a certain site, so they're going to slow it down for you. In the US, you're seeing this right now with T-Mobile and Binge On, uh, their video zero rating program, which basically says that if you watch Hulu, it's free. If you watch YouTube, well, it's also free, but your quality of video is going to be pretty poor because uh, YouTube is refusing to do a business deal with them. Now, T-Mobile's been doing this. Um, FCC has taken notice. They are considering whether to do something about this or not. But what's, what's happening there is that um, a telecom operator deciding for their own sake, saying that it suits us to slow down certain sites, mm. it suits us to f speed up certain sites, and therefore we shall do this. Um, and this, this is throttling and fast lanes. And, uh, it's one of the two as three aspects of net neutrality. See, Karen, there so, is so much that's going on that actually shouldn't really be going on, and it's going on because businesses are involved with the internet, either in terms of apps or in terms of websites or in terms of the telecoms company that get us access to it. Is there any way that you can kind yes. of regulate yourself out of this mess? Well, yes, this is exactly what net neutrality is. It essentially says that when you have vertical integration where a telecom or internet service provider also offers services over the internet. They can't use the benefits of one business to subsidize the other business because that would be right. a violation of so would uh, you say, the monopoly that they have. Would you say that there's net neutrality in the United States? Partially. Partially. The United States huh. has most of it except for zero rating, which is now coming back to bite. Um, in India, we are... And I think just to... Stop it. Yeah. And I think, I think just to correct kiran i think hulu is free but i think youtube is not uh, so i think you yes. can watch hulu uh, at regular speeds but i think youtube quality is throttled and lowered mm -hmm. down because they have it that's exactly the point that's a slow yeah, yeah. lane created by t-mobile for you know their users so your uh, so femi your yeah. show uh, will yeah. not stream very well uh, on on t-mobile binge on if on your youtube channel but if you put it on hulu it'll be like amazing right. and all of us will look spectacularly gorgeous <laughs> in so you did such a great job at doing the headline at the beginning of the uh pre-show let's see uh, if we can do lessons learned for the post show uh lessons learned we here from this experience that india has just gone through a lesson what, um, would, be the, what would be that lesson well the regulators listen to the people who are closest to them, I think, oh. is, is, is the best lesson. Kamba, what's the lesson learned? I think the lesson learned for us was, uh, I think we are a deeply uh, cynical country, and the fact that you can engage uh, young people in any sort of process uh, is beneficial, and the fact that uh, we could do that was uh, good for us. It, it felt good for us to do. That was the biggest learning for us. Kieran. Well, um, no matter what you do, somebody is going to be upset. Uh, learn to deal with it. Um, <laughs> Mihir here is disagreeing oh, with me Kiran. right now, but we're going, to have, we're going to have a discussion pretty soon on censorship online, and I'm pretty sure he'll be on my side at that point. Uh, I will indeed. This is not so well yet. <laughs> and Sadhanan, lesson learned. I'd say the lesson is for Facebook, and the lesson is marketing matters. Mm. And you could have a lot of money, but if you run a stupid ham-handed campaign, you will lose, and that's what happened. Interesting. You all maybe want more to ask you more questions, but we're at the end of the show. So I'm just going to ask Malika, how has this sort of resonated online? What do you have? I'll give you two uh, different uh, views. This is Rodrigo who says, he sees this as going to show that it's possible to fight corporate companies and show them that they aren't the internet and nor do they own it. Um, on the other yes. hand, though, you have this suite who says, we need to let the poor decide if they want to stay within these sites or move out and explore. So Sadhanan and Kieran and Kumba and Mahir, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. We really enjoyed it. So for three of our guests, good night, good morning. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Take care, everybody.